Good day. I'm G.W. Dibler, and welcome to my studio. I'm G.W. and I'm a painter. I've been a painter most of my life. I was born into a very unique family. Both my mother and my father were artists who decided not to go forward professionally. I had an uncle, Charles. He was a sculptor, a painter. He could play 17 instruments. So from the time I can remember being six, seven years old, and they found, my parents and family found out that I had talent. They always nurtured me. They always taught me how to do things. By the time I was eight years old, my mother had started teaching me how to paint. When I turned about 10, I used to go to the different artists in our neighborhood. And I would sweep their driveways, uh, clean out garages, mold their lawns in exchange for art lessons. By the time I was 14, I had my first one-man shows in our hometown of Ithaca, New York, and started selling my paintings. My life, I have gone to several art institutes, many art schools, and even some universities and colleges. I've always enjoyed studying art, meeting artists, and it's always been a very large portion of my life. I'm now 66 years old. I'm still painting, and I enjoy every minute that I spend in the studio. Upstate New York, where I was born, influenced me with the countryside, nature, the beautiful landscapes. Hawaii and the South Pacific influenced me with the beautiful, wonderful blueness of the skies. I mean, there was nothing like sitting on the deck or standing out on the bow of a deck in the middle of the South Pacific, watching the sunset or the sunrise. It's, in a lot of ways, my heart is still in that part of the world. I love it very much. I've been influenced wherever I went by the people, culture by the many things that I've seen from the large cities, New York City to Los Angeles to Honolulu. It's no matter how you look at it, everything that you hear, read, see, every person that you've ever met influences your life and your artwork. And it's, you know, it's really a wonderful interwoven tapestry of all of your life's experiences. Well, landscapes, I enjoy doing landscapes because technically they're challenging. It keeps your uh, skills honed and it requires a different set of skills, especially when I do landscapes. I enjoy doing very, very heavy impasto landscapes. I use the heavy, thick paint to recreate the rocks, the boulder, the natural terrain of the landscape. Landscapes is my brother would say one of the best things that he can remember me ever doing when I was young and studying art. I enjoy portraits. I don't look at it as 
much as painting a portrait as doing a painting of the person. The more things that I can include in that portrait of a person, the more images of the same person, such as when they were young, when they were in their 30s or 40s, when they're now just before their death in the cases of the homage paintings, showing their life in a life experiences. I prefer to paint the person's life and try to relate something about that person. I've always painted shadows, light, dark shapes. So it really doesn't matter whether it's one person or 30 people, you're just creating the same formula that you would use with one. Well, I like to paint the celebrities, but with those paintings, what I'm trying to do is to get the people to look at them, not for the roles that they played, not for the music that they did, but as a person, a person with love, laughter, with likes and dislikes, people that enjoyed life, and were there living their life it, that we all benefited. But at this, you know, you've really got to look at that person, not as a famous person or an actor, but as an individual person. It's kind of like if I do a portrait of a CEO of a corporation, let's say that his favorite thing is sailing and his most enjoyable time is when he spends it on his sailboat. Well, then I, what I would try to do is to take and give a picture of that CEO looking like he would in the boardroom with people knowing what he looked like. In the background, a picture of his boat with him at the helm. Just trying to take and give multiple layers to each person and their individual personalities. Family paintings are important to me because when I paint family, it's an act of love. I'm painting my family members, A, so that they remember me and so that they will have immortality in 500 years. As long as somebody looks at that picture, the painting, and they think about them, they're still alive. Rabbi Dove is my rabbi. I speak to him a lot. He's a very wonderful, kind person. He has a truly giving and caring heart. I'm attached to all religion. My synagogue, my religion is very, very personal to me. But with every painting that I do, I try to impart a little bit of my feelings about God, humanity, and the world around me. Artists have always been paying attention to politics. I don't think there has been very many artists who were able, ever able to escape it. Your politics are around us. We live them daily. We see them every time we turn around. So why not analyze them and lay them bare that everyone can see and have a record of our time and what it's like to be living during these days. Arizona is a wonderful place to live, especially Scottsdale, Arizona, Old Town Scottsdale, where I live. It's beautiful. You have the most incredible scenery and natural scenes that you could ever imagine. You have everything from the Grand Canyon to fresh missions that were built in the 1700s or earlier to take and see. The people are warm and caring. The When I moved here, I moved here because I had small children and I wanted them to grow up in a, what I felt was a safe environment where they could enjoy 
the same freedom that I enjoyed as a small child when I used to ride my bicycle four or five miles to see a friend, when I used to be able to go camping and hiking. And Arizona offered that wonderful blend of family, big city conveniences, and it's just a place that I've grown to love and care about very much. I use everything that I have for my paintings and I never know what I'm going to need. I paint a lot of times. I might start at three in the afternoon and paint till one or two the next day. So I never know what I might run out of. So I try to replace paints as I open them and use them. I also look at watch for estate sales, for things on even eBay where I can buy other artist studios out inexpensively so that I have a large variety of paints. A lot of the paints that I really enjoy the most are Singulaire, uh, Rembrandt. I enjoy handmade paints, heavily bodied paints with brilliant colors. And then I keep a lot of mica powders on hand and I even take and make a lot of my own paint that I use when I cannot find a traditional color that's what I need. Oh, I've been doing this, like I said, since I was eight years old and I've never had any problems. I keep making certain that a lot of the uh, chemicals and things I use, I use uh, low odor or environmentally safe uh, chemicals that are available now. I also have a filter in my studio that filters the air coming from the easel area to make sure that it stays pure. You know, it's, every artist has different tolerances and we all are exposed to chemicals in one way or another, no matter what we do when we work. I find that the larger the panel is, the more freedom I have. I build all of my own panels and painting surfaces the way I was taught when I was very young. I enjoy using now the aluminum composite panel then I make a hardwood frame out of popular wood or basswood, mount the panels to that. Then I hand sand those and cover, apply four layers of gesso to them so that I get exactly the texture and the under laminate that I need to support my paintings to give them a very long archival life. Working with a different media is just a part of self-expression. Not every single thing I do or every painting I see, I can paint the same way as the one before it. The gold leaf is truly wonderful to work with. What I do is multiple layers of gold leaf. Then I use very, very fine translucent layers of oil paint over top of it so I can tone the gold down so that the gold doesn't take over the entire painting. I was going to say, wait, the more you learn, the more you want to try. In the, just, it's an incredible world of supplies and materials available to today's artist. I have a large collection of palette knives also. I probably have 40 or 50 palette knives. My brushes, a lot of the brushes I have might go back to the 1930s and 40s and were given to me by other artists that I've known. I take extremely good care of my brushes. I make certain that I have a jar that I rinse them out in to remove the most of the oil that I take and I will clean them again in a second pot of thinner to make sure they're clean. And when I'm done painting with them that day, I use Dawn dishwashing detergent because that helps to remove all of the oils out of the brush and leave them very soft or in their natural state, depending upon the type of brush. And it's just, I use everything from a three inch wide brush to when I'm doing fine details a brush that's a number 30 brush, the size of a hypodermic needle, a 30 uh, X brush. Well, the Tree of Life was done as a painting for my, the synagogue, the Chabad in Phoenix. The painting started out like all of my other paintings do with a sketch. Then from there, it went to multiple layers of gold leaf. 
It went to the leaves being overlaid on top of the gold leaf and even gold leaf put on top of some of the leaves. The tree itself is a representation of the knowledge of God, man, and what it, our greatest gift is eternal life. And we reach that eternal life through our studies and through our beliefs in something greater than ourselves. Yes, I've seen some of Klim's work. My paintings, painters, I probably the most uh, influenced by, of course, was Monet, Renoir, Gauguin, Van Gogh, Picasso, and Salvador Dali became a very large influence in my life. I have not visited Israel yet. It's on my bucket list of things to do. On my bucket list of the things I really want to do since I was 22 years old, I've wanted to come to France. I've wanted to take and live and work in France for a year or two. That's still something that I really enjoy doing. Right now, I'm working on a painting for a very charming young lady. She has two dogs that meant a great deal to her. And they passed away. So I'm working on putting a painting together that is a portrait of her and her two dogs, or as I would say, her two best friends. It's not that much different than an everyday life of mine. My life, I've spent the last several years in my studio working. I work around the paint. So I'll paint for four, five, six hours. Then I'll rest for a few hours until the paint firms up and I come back in and I paint some more. Average month, I probably go out once or twice during the month. Everything I need, I have delivered to me. It's really a very enjoyable time. It's, I like the seclusion. I like the fact that I can work for several hours at a time and enjoy myself. The only thing I don't like about the pandemic is the effects on the health of the world, the number of people that have suffered and died. I do not like the families that have been left behind. I find a great amount of pride and humanity for the doctors, for the medical workers, and those that have given so much of themselves and their personal lives to help others. To me, the pandemic has brought out the worst and the very best in all of us. the seasons of flowering and the beginning of life. With the spring and the summer, you have these beautiful colors and it's an unfolding of life and it goes back to my childhood when the spring came and the snows were gone. We would go camping. We'd go for weekend drives in the country. It was a very wonderful time and it's just left a very beautiful memory for me. That's why I enjoy those times the most. I've been thinking about doing some landscapes where I would be comparing the seasons in the same setting, such as having one that would show you the spring, the summer, the fall, and the winter. But I keep coming up with other ideas that are just seem much more important to pursue. Not really. I can take and go wherever I need to go. I have friends. I have people that I can go with. Before I ended up uh, in this wheelchair from an accident back in 2015 when I was rear-ended by a taxi cab, I'd spent months at the Grand Canyon taking 
thousands and thousands of photographs. And that's one of the projects I'd like to complete too. I still haven't done the trip down the Colorado River or gotten pictures along the bottom of the Grand Canyon. So again, it's one of those things on my bucket list that I really want to be able to do because I'd like to be able to do a series of paintings where you would have three paintings of the same exact coordinates, GPS, you'd get it from the air looking down, from the rims looking at it, and then from the bottom looking up. But no, I find that I can come and go where I need to. It's not something that bothers me or that I put a physical limitation on, correct? This, since the pandemic hit, of course, those events I have not attended, most of those events have been canceled throughout the country. It's something that I enjoy very much because it's when you go out to an expo or you do a gallery show that you get to meet the people. It's from their input that I get to understand if I've reached the mark that I'm looking for. I get to see the enjoyment on their face. I get to see how they react to what I do, which is probably the greatest satisfaction I have. Uh, no, the light is actually my studio lighting. I use a video lighting that you would normally use in a video studio for video production so that my studio is constantly at 6,500 Kelvin natural daylight. So I get the perfect light for painting. I always wake up early. By uh, when I wake up early in the morning, I have a few moments that I can just sit and think. Then, of course, I go and I make my cup of cappuccino, which I have to start every day with. And then there's time for self-reflections, for prayers, for studies. Then I ask blessings for my work that I'm going to be doing that day and for people that I've met that I feel needed help. I ask for that help for them. And then I start my day. It depends on the person. A lot of the people I paint have passed away. In cases like this, I will get as many reference photos from their family, friends that I can. The more reference photographs I have, the better the painting is because it's not one particular photo. I use photos to make certain that I capture everything I want to see, the way their teeth are, the way their little wrinkles come in the corner of their eyes and their lips, the way the light twinkles and reflects in their eyes and their hair. When I do paintings from life with people where they pose, it's still a combination of several photographs, which I take myself. I prefer high resolution 60 megapixel plus photography it just gives me a wealth of information. Then they are sitting so I can get the absolute best reflections, the flesh that I can find. Their flesh tones are much more lifelike and it adds another layer into the painting itself. But both ways are easy to do when you sit and you think about what you're doing, how you're doing. It's all the same approach even as it was in art school where you would sit and spend many hours doing rough sketches after rough sketches to you finalize the pose you would like. Then from that pose, you move on. I do not do much outside painting. I have people that have asked me to join them at different places to do the plein air. I've, I'm a studio artist. I've always been a studio artist. I like having everything arranged so that I can have the paintings and it gets awfully hard to carry a four by eight foot painting outside to paint on. You don't really start, you start with a general idea. Then you do your research and you might go through thousands, literally thousands of images and I'll take those images and those ideas down to two to 300. Then I'll start working after I determine what my main image is going to be and everything evolves around it. And in a lot of cases, that painting completely changes several times where you're drawing it, where you're laying it out, where you're working on it to when you 
get done with it, it has the original idea, but it's completely different than what you had originally envisioned it was going to be. I give the paintings themselves a time to evolve and to become more than just a technical piece of artwork. There's a painting that I've been planning on doing and want to do for the last 15 to 20 years. It's a painting that would be incredibly large. It would be multiple dimensional. That painting will encompass painting, sculpture, soft sculpture, videography. It will could panels where people can see it and look at it. It would take a team of about 20 people to do it within four years. The whole concept of that painting is so that when a person looks at it from the outside, they see the images, they see what's changing, they see what's going on. When they enter the portal, and go inside of it, their mere presence changes the work itself. As they move, their position of their arms inside will change frequencies, sounds, and tones. As they move, it would change areas and different imaging would coming forward, as well as the image of that viewer who is now the creator being part of the environment of that painting. It's a combination of both. Some of the paintings are in the rabbi's home. Some of the paintings are in their synagogues. I have to say it's my relaxation because when you're painting and you're doing it and you're in tune with everything, it's more like you're just not even really sitting there doing it as much as you're part of it. It's very uh, relaxing at times. My relaxation may be sitting down while I'm painting. I have different music tracks that I have playing. The music that I'm listening to will depend on the painting that I'm doing. If I'm doing certain paintings, then 60s rock and roll might be what's applicable. Maybe 80s rock and roll, classical music, everything from Andrea Bocelli to the Beatles. I think that digital painting has a very wonderful future and a unique place. It will never replace to some artists the paintbrush and painting, but it's like a computer, like Photoshop. It that allows people to reach inside of themselves and pursue their dreams, their ideas, and it's an extension of their own mind. I'm all for it. I've taken almost every single art course that they offered all the way through high school, college, and into universities. I've worked in photography. I've done a sculpture. I've done serigraphic printing. I've done etching, drawings. It's, I found that as you experiment, as you learn new techniques, learn, learn new methods, as you experiment with other forms of art, that it enhances your art in general. Person who understands how you fold the lines and you work with a three-dimensional sculpture becomes much stronger as a painter, as an artist on their two-dimensional work and vice versa. Well, the largest painting I've ever done to date was 10 foot by 30 feet and it was on canvas and it was basically a canvas that would hung inside of the building, free hanging, attached up to the uh, ceiling so that it would hang down. I love murals. I love institutional art. And when it comes to doing murals and institutional art, I would welcome almost any opportunity to do so. 
it's just a wonderful medium. It's a wonderful way to be able to present a multitude of ideas or themes and just on a very grand and beautiful scale. I have in the past, I've worked on canvas, on linen, I've worked on hardwood panels, I've worked on natural birchwood panels. I've found that the aluminum composite panel gives me the ideal surface. It's firm, it's rigid, it doesn't warp, it doesn't twist, it isn't affected by humidity changes or changes in air pressure. And it just gives you this wonderful surface where you can take and make the texture anything from a light orange peel on the surface of it or extremely smooth. It depends on what you need and what style the painting itself is going to be. It depends on the painting. The painting of the, uh, the World Heals and Mourns was about six months time in painting. And that was around the clock almost to get it done. Normally, I figure anywhere from two to six months on a painting. I have taken and done some workshops. I do do teaching. I prefer to keep that as a one-on-one -on -one or two people at a time. I found that when you can work with the people directly, answer their individual questions, and help them see their work so that they can uh, progress, it's much easier to do it if you're just doing it almost as a mentorship. Some of the landscapes that I have done were actually inspired by the photographs of my daughter Zoe. My granddaughter is very, very talented in both art and writing. And by, you know, my children have their own lives and what their own dreams were. And if you come from a family where the father spent most of his life painting, you're kind of used to that world and you want something different. I've done abstract painting. It's funny you should mention that when I was 14 years old is when I fell in love with Picasso. And during those days when I first started showing my paintings, that's what I was showing. I was showing abstract art. I was showing cubism. I have show abstract expressionism. And I think all of it, it's all part of growing. Every artist who studied art from that time they were, their very youngest first memories of looking at things has been a progression of art history. You start studying art and almost like your first sketches, you're doing these rough little sketches, look like drawings on a cave wall, all the way up through to when you're studying the masters. And the whole point it any type of art, any technique is to learn the techniques and make them your own. Incorporate them into your vision and not try to just simply reproduce something because it sells and it's someone else's vision. Well, I'll tell you something that very few people know of is that every time I'm, from the time I start my sketches on a painting, every time I leave my canvas, I take a photograph of that painting. So that by the time a painting is done, I may have three to 400 pictures that chronologically show the progression of the painting from the, the changes in the painting, the way it's formed, the way everything happens until it's done. I like the fact that I can turn those into a slideshow because my goal has always been to be able to take and help that person especially in the times when I have people that will hire me to do a commission for them. Every day when I'm done, I text them a picture of that day's work and what, how the painting of theirs looks because I want everyone to feel like they are part of the creative process. I'd like to help them, to lead them so that when that painting is done, they've bought the painting, they have it in their home, they could sit down and show their friends a video about how that painting was created. They could tell, well, here, I didn't quite like the way my arm looked and I talked to him. So he made it a little bit thinner here. At every step of the way, I know what my painting was doing and how it was going to go. So that when it's done, it becomes a very personal painting for them. Well, I would hope 
that they would take a few seconds and look at it and study it and view it not with their hearts, their eyes, but view it with their mind and their emotions. I would hope that they enjoy what I do. And I take it, I get comments from people all the time saying that they love the work or that they were too crazy about this or that. And both are very constructive. I have over 5,000 followers now on Facebook and social media is just now beginning to take off worldwide. I have, a, most of my following seems to be from Europe, from China and Japan. And I love it when people just take two seconds and say, I really like this painting. It meant something to me. And all I ask is to take a moment and look and feel what it is that the artist is trying to do. Not just me, but all artists. Artists have a unique view. And we have this habit of looking at an artist and judging a view that was uniquely their own. See what you feel. See how it inspires you. The most thing, the biggest thing is see what it makes you dream. See how it expands your vision. That's all I can ask. I'd just like to thank each and every person out there who follows me on the internet, on Facebook, all of those people that I've met throughout my life that have added to my artwork, that have supported me emotionally, spiritually, those people that have helped me to grow as an artist because those paintings aren't just mine. They're each and every person who's ever influenced them. And I just want to tell them all, thank you. And I appreciate them all very much. At one time, I could I had a lot of other languages and his age got to me and some of the medications they give me began to wear down a little bit on me. And it, you just don't get the opportunity to speak the other languages as much as you would like to. I had a knowledge of uh, Polish, of German, of Russian, of Hebrew, and even some Vietnamese during my lifetime. But nothing that I would really say I could sit down and carry on a conversation with a person that was from that country. Shalom. Uh, it's hello, goodbye. It's the best of everything and the best of all that you could have in life. I've enjoyed the time we've had together today, but our time is almost over now. And I want to thank each and every one of you for taking the time to find out about my studio and my artwork. Thank you very much and have a safe and wonderful day.